The three main interpretations of eschatology. We will define what is eschatology and the three popular interpretations of it. 1 John 4.1 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Eschatology, which means the study of last things, is the study of end times, the history and destiny of mankind, and the timing of the kingdom to come with Yeshua's return. Studying the book of Daniel and Revelation, for example, can be considered eschatology. Revelation 1.3 Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. There seems to be some in the body of Yeshua who say that this area of study is a waste of time and or a fruitless discussion. Prophecy is a large portion of the scriptures and is God given for his elect to read and properly understand. We need to know what is truth and what is false doctrine. Ephesians 4.14 That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now the first interpretation of eschatology is historicism. Historicism sees prophecy as an ongoing fulfillment throughout history and will be fully completed at the end of the age with the second coming of Yeshua. This is the school of thought at which I interpreted Matthew 24 and all other prophetic books. The second school of thought is preterism. This view was created by a 16th century Jesuit named Louis del Alcazar. Preterism sees most of the Bible prophecies as being fulfilled either by the 1st century with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD or by the 5th century with the fall of the Roman Empire. But then they have a huge gap of time, which we currently are in, which nothing is being fulfilled as they wait for the second coming of Yeshua. The third viewpoint, which is arguably the most common amongst believers today, including the Torah movement, is Futurism. Futurism views most or all of end-time prophecies as yet to be fulfilled, and will all be fulfilled right before the second coming of Yeshua. This view was put forward around the same time as Preterism, by another Jesuit, a counter-reformer named Francisco Ribera. Again, Futurism and Preterism came from the Catholic Jesuits to combat and distract from the historicist viewpoint. Let's look at the fourth beast of Daniel 7, which mentions the ten horns and another little horn to show how all three view prophecy. Daniel 7, verse 7 through 8. And behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came among them another little horn. The historicist sees these horns as ten kingdoms, or nations, which historically arose after the fall of the Roman Empire. These ten nations were the beginning of what we know today as the European nations. The little horn which sprang from among these ten nations in Europe was the papacy, which is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. So now you see why the Jesuits were so quick to counteract this teaching for it was exposing the Pope as the little horn who changes God's laws and times. So starting with the Jesuit preterist teaching, they say it's ten kings or Caesars who succeeded each other in the Roman Empire, and this prophecy was thus fulfilled by the first century long before the Roman Catholic Church arose. Secondly, Jesuits used futurism, who generally teach that the ten horns are kings or kingdoms, and would say that they are, none of them have risen yet and they identify the little horn as a future antichrist. As we all know, this is a huge money maker today. Everyone from the Queen of England to the President of the United States has been labeled this little horn by modern day futurists. Preterists and futurists are Catholic Jesuit doctrine, and it was all to distract the believer from ever seeing the Pope's office as the little horn. If you want to know more, I'll leave a link in the comment section below. It'll go more in depth with this topic. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed these videos. Thank you.